Welcome back to another beautiful day in the land of music. My name is Douglas and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through updating the firmware on the M-Audio Oxygen Pro. So I'm gonna break this video up into a couple of different parts. The first part, I'm gonna walk through all of the changes that are in firmware release 2.1.1. That's the latest firmware version for the Oxygen Pro as of the time of making this video. So I'm gonna walk through that and I'm gonna break that up into the Ableton Live changes the new features, and then the bug fixes for the Oxygen Pro. And this is for the Oxygen Pro 25, 49, and 61. Then I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step on how to install, where to find the firmware, how to download and install it onto the Oxygen Pro, and then what you need to do to finalize the firmware update. So first, I've got a detailed list here on my computer of the changes in the firmware release. So I'm gonna go through, from an Ableton mapping perspective, they've changed around or fixed a bunch of things. So the pads now control clips, the faders control the volume knobs, and then the fader buttons on the 49 and 61 key versions of the controller now control arming the track, selecting mute solo, those types of things. That's not available as a feature on the Oxygen Pro 25, which is the version I have right in front of me here. Um, but I do have the Hammer 88 Pro and that's got the selector buttons. So they fixed the Ableton Live mapping for those. The knobs on the Oxygen Pro 25 are used for volume as well as pan and other functions and they've fixed those. So those control the volume, pan, device, and sends, and you use the pads on the bottom here by holding shift and tapping those, and that tells the DAW controls on the controller what function the knobs are controlling. So that's implemented now for the Ableton Live mapping. And then the back button controls the undo function in Ableton Live. Now I'm gonna include a link below that gives a bunch of details on how to set up Ableton Live to work with the Oxygen Pro. And I'll link that in the description below. So if you're an Ableton Live user, hopefully this is great news for you that they fixed or added a bunch of different mapping controls for the dock controls on the Oxygen Pro. Moving on from there to the new features, there's a couple of new features they've added in this firmware update. The first thing they've added is soft takeover on the faders and knobs when switching between preset and DAW mode. So basically what soft takeover is, is that the position of the knob may not exactly reflect the value of let's say a knob or a fader on your DAW. So maybe I've got my volume control fader over here. This controls the volume of let's say track one and track one is currently set to negative five dB. Now, if I switch over to preset mode and I modify things in one of my virtual instruments and I tweak my fader, you know, maybe I bring that virtual instrument down and I go back to DAW mode, soft takeover will force the fader to not actually affect the volume of track one until I hit negative five dB, at which case then the fader takes over from there. This is actually really nice because in the case where there's not soft takeover, the minute I start to move that fader, it's gonna jump the parameter to whatever is assigned to that fader or knob to whatever value is on the hardware fader itself. So soft takeover allows you to move the fader and actually bring it up until it hits the point at which the parameter is in your DAW, and then it starts to control it from there. Just save some of those parameter jumps that you see without soft takeover. The second new feature that they've added is another color to the pads. So you can assign a color for when the pad is in the latch state. So when you've got latch feature turned on, you can set another color for when that pad is latched. Couple of cool little feature updates there. I'm really happy they did the soft takeover. Um, I don't use latch a lot, but that's a cool feature to help you know which pads are latched and which pads are not. So a couple of cool features there. From a bug fix perspective, I'm gonna read through this list here. And the biggest one is improvements to the performance on the pitch and mod wheel. So this is something that I've seen probably most commonly complained about on the Oxygen Pro series. And I tested this on my Oxygen Pro 25 and it is indeed fixed. So there's gonna be a huge round of applause from everybody. Thanks to M Audio for fixing that. Um, if you aren't aware of what that issue was, is the 
pitch in the mod wheels were very slow to react. So when you were doing fast pitch changes on maybe a lead sound or something like that, the, the pitch would not go all the way up to full range. It was a very kind of slow, almost delayed pitch effect, which almost made it impossible to do some of those fast licks and runs. They've fixed that now so it does the full range and it responds uh, quickly to the pitch and modulation changes that are taking place on the wheel. So really happy with that. I think that's probably the biggest bug fix in my mind and that's taken care of with this firmware release. I'm gonna read through the other bug fixes. Again, you may not have experienced these. I've experienced a few of them, but not all of them, um, but I'm gonna read through the list. So hopefully if you have experienced it and you hear it in the list, you'll know, oh great, the firmware update fix is this. So another thing they fixed on the controller is when you power cycle the controller, previous to this firmware update, some of the global settings would get lost. So key sensitivity changes, things like that would get lost. Those are now fixed, so it saves those even when you power cycle the controller. They fixed an issue in FL Studio where the save hotkey message was sending the wrong message. They fixed an issue in Studio One's up and down transport controls were reversed. They removed the clip button functionality from FL Studio to prevent software lockup. They improved the timing clock for both the internal and external clocks. And they also changed the DAW control mapping for Logic Pro from Mackie to Mackie HUI. So if you're not familiar with DAW controls, those communicate over Mackie or HUI, Mackie HUI controls. So they fixed that. So if you're a Logic Pro user, hopefully you're able to start using more of the DAW features in the controller. A few other things they fixed is the undo message in Bitwig, that's fixed now. Um, they fixed an issue where certain preset press and release messages were reversed. They fixed an issue where the transpose in all the keybed zones was defaulting to negative 12. They also fixed an issue with certain factory preset controls sending incorrect knob fader and button messages fixed an issue where the first and last note selections in zones were labeled incorrectly. They fixed an issue with note repeat latch and conflicts with the ARP knob lock and the DAW pad lock functions. They also fixed an issue when selecting cancel, it still saved the preset changes, so that's fixed now. They also fixed an issue where when saving a custom preset, it would erase the other preset names. They fixed an issue when enabling chord mode via preset editor, it was causing a flurry of notes to be sent from the arpeggiator. A few other things they fixed are Reaper not sending pan messages from the knobs, relative messages being sent from the encoder. Chord mode was producing stuck notes when changing voicing. The arpeggiator, when latch was off and the keys were pressed, the arpeggiator wasn't starting until the clock was sent, so that's fixed now. They also fixed an issue where the BPM was being doubled when sending clock out of the five pin MIDI port. And the last few issues they fixed were the arpeggiator and note repeat with keys or pads pressed we're not sending the messages until a start stop message was received and fixed an issue where the zones were not sending the correct messages at startup. And finally, they fixed an issue with stuck notes under certain shift modifier conditions. So that's the list of bug fixes. If you made it through that and you've experienced some of those bugs, download the firmware update. I would say update the controller anyway, because it's gonna fix a lot of the little things that maybe have been plaguing you as you've been using the Oxygen Pro. Honestly, I've only experienced a few of these bugs and I've always found a workaround or a way to get by them, so it hasn't affected the performance of the controller for me. Um, and I'm really happy with a couple of new things that they've added to the controller as a part of this firmware release. One thing to note here before you run the updater is to back up any any presets or custom DAW settings that you've set up through the preset editor, back them up onto your computer because at the end of the update cycle, we're gonna do a hard reboot to reset the controller and bring in the fresh firmware update. So that being said, let's jump now onto the computer and we're actually gonna go and I'm gonna show you how to get this firmware update, how to download and update the controller itself. So let's jump right into that. Over here on the computer, go to M Audio's website and we're gonna click there and on the home page, there's actually a banner here that says firmware and feature update available now. We could click on that to go to this firmware update you'll see they list some of the high level improvements here, deeper integration with Ableton Live, 
all the preset editor changes they've made reflect the bug fixes and features they've added to the controller. So there are new versions of preset editor for the Oxygen Pro series. So we can either click on this banner, but if that's not there, you can go up to support and click drivers and updates. This is gonna bring us to a page where we can select uh, from three different sections here. On the left-hand side, choose keyboard controllers. Scroll down and select your version of the Oxygen Pro. So I've got the Oxygen Pro 25 here, but if you've got the 49 or the 61, select the appropriate controller. And then on the right-hand side, choose your operating system. In my case, I'm Windows 10, 64-bit. And then click the Show Results button. Down at the bottom, if we scroll down, we've got a couple of different sections here. One for firmware updates and one for software updates. If we click on these links over here under the file column header, this brings us over to a detailed page for this update. Scroll down to the bottom and click the download now. This is going to ask you to save this zip file to your computer for the firmware update. I already did that here in my firmware update folder. So I downloaded that, but go ahead and save that to your computer. And then we're gonna go back to this page and we're gonna download the preset editor as well. So click that link, scroll down to the bottom of that details page and click the download now. Save that to your computer. I did that here and I've got the exe file there. Once you've got these downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and unzip the firmware file. You see I've got others here because I have other versions of this controller. I'll be putting videos out for those if you do have the Oxygen Pro Mini, Hammer 88 Pro or the Oxygen Mark V check out those videos. I will link them below as I get them made and get the details from M-Audio on the exact changes in those firmware updates. So for now, let's go ahead and unzip the Oxygen Pro 25 and you can do this by right clicking and using the Windows Extract All function or in my case, I have 7-Zip, I can unzip this using that as well. And that's going to create an unzipped directory here for the Oxygen Pro 25 firmware version 2.1.1. Inside this directory, open that up and we've got a directory here for the updater. We have this .dat file, which is the actual firmware data update file. And then we have a readme, which is a PDF of written instructions on how to update the controller. If you prefer written instructions, go check that out. Otherwise, continue watching the video and I'm gonna walk you through all of the steps. So back in that directory, let's navigate to the firmware updater directory. And before we do that, we wanna make sure that the controller is turned off, but still plugged into our computer. So we leave the cable, the USB cable plugged, but we've turned it off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold shift and then we're gonna hold the back and the forward bank button. And then holding all three of those, we're gonna turn the controller on. That's gonna put the Oxygen Pro in updating mode. And this is what we need it in to run the firmware update. So now that we see Oxygen Series updating here on the Oxygen Pro screen, over on our computer, inside the updater directory, open up the Oxygen Pro 25 firmware updater by double clicking on that exe file. This is going to open up the firmware updater for the Oxygen Pro. And in step one, we're gonna open the update file. So click the little folder icon to the right of that field. And it put me default into that folder that has the .dat file. But if for some reason it doesn't default your location to there, use this up here to navigate inside this window here that gives you your path. So navigate to that M Audio Oxygen Pro 25 firmware update folder and click on the Oxygen Pro 25 underscore v2.1.1.dat file. Click open and that's going to load this up product model Oxygen Pro 25 software version version 2.1.1. Just confirm those are correct for your controller and we're going to click this update button down here. We're going to click that. We get a progress bar here. And basically the computer is now communicating with the controller to update the controller to version 2.1.1. Once that's complete, we get a success message. Just click OK on that success message and close the updater. Now we're gonna turn the controller off. And before we turn it on, we're gonna hold the octave down and the octave up. And I mentioned this earlier, but this is gonna do a hard power cycle of the controller 
bring in those fresh settings from the firmware update. So hold the octave down and up buttons at the same time and then turn the controller on. Let go of those up and down buttons and we're gonna be presented with the setup screen because we've basically hard reset our controller to bring in the fresh firmware settings. I'm gonna select Windows and I'm gonna select Pro Tools as my DAW. And at this point, we have now successfully updated the firmware on our Oxygen Pro. So the last thing we're gonna do is go over to the computer again and go back to our firmware updates folder here where we downloaded the Oxygen 25 preset editor. Double click on that exe file and we're gonna go ahead and update the preset editor on our computer. It's gonna ask you to authorize it for the computer, click yes, and we're gonna walk through the installation process, click next, accept the license agreement, click next, and then click install. Windows is gonna go through the installation process, click finish, and we can go to our start menu and we can search or we can scroll down to M Audio. And when we drop this down, you'll see the Oxygen Pro 25 preset editor. Click on that to open it up. And again, we've got our controller still connected and turned on. So when we open up the preset editor, this is gonna load up the preset editor and we could restore any custom presets or DAW presets that we save to our computer, restore them back onto the controller, but we can confirm that we're in the correct version by going to the help menu and about. And you can see here that we're on version 1.0.2, which is the latest that we just updated. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you've got any questions or you get stuck, uh, need any help, throw that in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out there and get those questions answered for you. Thanks for watching, stay inspired, and keep making that music.